Hi, I'm Pat, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to keep the exhaust valve open on your BMW i8 using a string and a weight. The BMW i8 has an exhaust valve. There are two exhaust ports that come out of the muffler. One is open all the time, and the other one is controlled by an electronic actuator, which closes a valve when there's not a lot of load on the engine. What this means is that when you're idling, no matter what mode you're in, whether you're in eco or comfort or sport mode, that valve is closed all the time. Now, some other BMW owners know that they can reach under the dash and pull the fuse for the actuator for the valve, and that'll keep it open. But that's only on cars that have that valve open normally. The i8 and even the 7 Series BMWs, their valves are closed normally. Now the reason why BMW keeps that valve closed most of the time is to reduce noise. That valve reduces the amount of noise by up to 8 decibels. And the BMW i8 was designed to be a great gas mileage car and to be quiet more than anything else. It's got great looks, we think it should have more performance, but we got what we got. So anyway, if we want to open up that exhaust valve full time, there are a bunch of different ways that we could do it. Now I've done some testing in the past by removing the wheel well here on the right rear side of the car. And when I got into that part of the car, I was able to see the top of the electronic actuator. Once I unbolted that actuator, I saw that there was a little metal link that runs between the actuator and the exhaust valve. So the actuator and the exhaust valve top look like they're the, uh, the heads of a screw. They just have a slot on them and this little piece of wire would connect the two. So when the actuator would turn open, it would then open the valve. So my first attempt at opening this exhaust valve was me taking the time to remove the actuator and remove this little wire and then take another piece of wire and run it around the part of the flap that would then keep the flap open all the time. And I drove the car around and it was great. I put it all back together and I drove the car around for a while while trying to think about what I can do in order to open this valve up by some other means. And that's when I discovered that the actuator was controlled through a fused circuit. So fuse 58, which is a 7.5 amp fuse, controlled that actuator. I removed fuse 58 and then I drove around and it kept the exhaust valve closed. And the more I accelerated the car, it kept that exhaust valve closed and it never threw a trouble code. No check engine light, nothing. That was a great piece of data. I put the fuse back in place, drove the car around, everything was fine. And I thought, how can I replicate the fully open throttle position of me putting my foot to the floor and demanding the highest amount of load from the engine so it would open this valve? And I discovered that maybe I needed to have someone sit in the passenger side and as I drove down the road, full pedal, they could reach under the dash and pull that fuse out. Well, that fuse block is so far tucked up under the dash. And link in the description, you'll see what I mean in my fuse replacement video that I recorded earlier. That fuse block is so far up under the dash that it would be nearly impossible for a passenger to reach up there and pull it. So I thought, I wonder if there was another way of pulling that fuse down. Because the fuse block sits parallel to the road. And if you were able to just hang something from that fuse and pull it straight down, it would fall out of place. So I thought, let me get a string. So I got a string, a long string. And I tied it to fuse 58 after I pulled it out of the fuse block. And all I needed to do now was find a way to pull it straight down. If I had a passenger sitting in the passenger seat, they could put their foot through the string and then give it a tug. And that would pull the fuse straight down. But for me, I was doing some testing and I wanted to figure out what I could do in order to pull the fuse by myself. So I found a 10 pound weight that I no longer use and probably should. And I placed this on the floor and I had the fuse in the fuse block and I had the string running through the weight up to the driver's side of the car and I gave it a tug. 
I gave it a tug at full throttle. And what happened was that valve opened up. I then removed the fuse and the valve never closed. Okay, so I'm gonna put the engine under load and I'm gonna pull the string. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> so let's take a closer look at this fuse block. I have some light turned on under here so we can see it very well. And you'll notice here, um, I've already removed the panel under the bottom of the glove box. And our fuse is located right here. This is where that seven and a half amp fuse came from. That's exactly where I tied the string around it when I inserted it back into place. And then I placed the weight here on the floor and pulled it from the passenger side. Now, in order to verify that the valve was open, I had to take a look underneath the car here and this exhaust port, the one on the right, that is the one that had the valve closed. And it's kind of hard to see here on camera. I did take another picture of it where I was able to see what that valve looks like when it's open. And when it's closed, of course, you know, it would be blocked. So at this point, my exhaust valve is open and I'm personally happy with that. Now, of course, it may not be right for you and it may not be legal for you. I don't know. It depends on what country you're, you're watching from and whether or not you want to take the risk with your warranty or whatever. But for me, I felt like this was an easy enough uh, fix for the, the issue that I had, which is I wanted to hear more engine noise. So by removing that fuse and allowing that flap to stay open, I am completely happy with the way this car is right now. I don't have a modified exhaust. I'm very happy with the stock exhaust and I'm glad that it's making a little bit more noise. Full throttle. So that concludes today's video. If you happen to like this information, please give me a big thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel and ring that bell for notifications as I'll be posting BMW i8 content often on this channel. Thanks for watching and happy motoring.